would you be more comfortable over that side? Which, which way do you feel more natural? No, I'm happy where I was. All right, all right, okay, yeah. we'll do it like that. Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee and this is Robin Clevett and we're from Skill Builder and we've got a tool test for you. You can see what we're testing. We're testing this Maffel track saw. We've been asked loads and loads of comments underneath our various tool saying, why don't you test Maffel? Get Maffel in. Finally, we managed to track them down, if you'll excuse that pun, and we got the saw. On loan, I've got to say, they didn't give it to us and they're not paying us for this review. So. The guy came down and he showed me this saw. Now, I already own a Makita and I've got a Festool cordless, so I'm fully track sawed up, really. But when I saw this, at the end of it, I thought, I really want that saw. Even though I'm getting close to retirement age, I've got no justification for having this. And if my wife ever found out that I was spending her hard-earned money on this saw, she'd be cross. But, you know, it's a touch and go thing. I might have to make them an offer. Yeah, they're, they're a fabulous brand. I mean, I've, I've known about the brand for years through roof construction in Germany and oh, yeah. where they're sort of big. Yeah. Um, they do roof construction completely different to us. So where I lay a rafter on its side and I'll go through with a circular saw one at a time, they'll take 20 timbers, they'll lay them on the back, clamp them together and they'll use a circular saw corded obviously but Monster. with a huge blade yeah. and it will take you know do 200 mil depth of cut there's a guy at the front and a guy at the back and they're pulling it through and they're cutting all their plum cuts there and they've also got a saw which will take the bird's mouths out as well yeah. so it's really good it's a really good brand it's almost like you've only just got to look at that it's, it's like a battleship you know yeah, it's, yeah. it's rock solid i mean this is the this is my um, Festool yeah. ed edition. Nothing but, wrong with Festool. Yeah, so I'd be interested to sort of yeah. see it um, Well, perform. let me tell you, let me just, just if I can, from memory, all right? Because okay. I'm not going to get this word perfect, but you can ask me stuff and we'll work it out between us. But, you know, I just had a look at this saw yesterday for the first time. So here I am with it. We haven't even run it yet. So yeah. may maybe it all goes wrong when we yeah, run it. Yeah. Who knows? First thing that the guy said is it's got a fast blade change, right? Yeah. So. What we've got to do, press that button in there, yeah. flick that back. Oh, that's neat. It comes, yeah? That's now, neat. You say fast blade change. Who needs a fast blade change? We're not in that much of a rush, you know. No. How many times do you change your blade? But I think what you could say is it's an easy blade change, yeah. you know? Well, We're can not I just messing say around. one other thing, yeah. Roger? Just yeah. not about just changing the blade, but hmm. get your air compressor and you can blow that out oh, in a second, okay. you know? Nice. So for cleaning it out, checking your blade, checking your teeth without having to sort of go around every one like this. Yeah. So I do think that's a bit of an advantage nice. over, over this one. I mean, this has always been pretty good. Similar thing, pull up that, lock it down, enables you to get to the Allen key. Allen keys in the handle, so they really thought this through as well. But yeah. you, you haven't got the advantage of being able to see all the teeth. No, no. But it has locked the blade off. Yeah. So well, it this, does two funnily things. enough, this does the same thing. It's locked it yeah. automatically. As soon as you flick that back, or actually you have to press that in, you right. have to press that button in, and that locks the blade in order to lift that handle up. Now, what this also does is it isolates it. You can't now turn it on. It right. won't turn on. Having said that, Always unplug. Yeah. You know, and First if it, rule. And if you've got a cordless, pull the battery out so that you're not ever caught by surprise because you start life with this many, you want to end <laughs> life with that many if you do. Sure, don't you? It's so true. How many chippies do you know? Uh, I mean, I know quite a few people um, who've yeah. got bits of fingers yeah, missing. And, uh, I don't even like to talk about it because I don't want to tempt fate. It can happen no, no, to anybody. Absolutely, it can, yeah. So, anyway. We're all about safety. So that's a lovely idea. There's an Allen key there, which fits into the housing. So you can change it, you know, standard Allen key job. Yep. And obviously they do a choice of blades like everybody else. A slightly different thickness to this blade to that Festool one. Right. I can't tell you offhand, but we'll get that figure up for you. But Are you we talking tell, thinner? I think it's thinner. Yeah. I think it's a little bit thinner. Now, yeah. the other thing is, it's got a 1400 watt motor. Okay. So it's taking out slightly less material. Yeah. And it's got more torque on that motor. Now this motor is a special kind of motor. Again, I can't remember the name of it, but it's got a very funny name. It's actually brushed. It's not brushless, okay. but they reckon it's got high torque. The other thing that I want to show you, Robin, is that you see this, the way they channel this around here? Yeah. This is to throw the dust out more efficiently okay so rather than being a, a, just a, a plain housing it's yeah. got a kind of fluting inside it so it's always throwing the dust to the back always throwing the dust out into the port yeah yeah and 
on the outside there, I don't know whether what you've got, but they've got a rubber seal here. So it's got a gasket yeah. of some description. That's a, that's a gasket. Yeah. Obviously, that looks okay. You know, years to come, it might might wear out slightly, but who knows? But anyway, most of the dust goes out through there. But have a look at this, right? We've got to do this right. Yeah. Okay. Now that clicks off, so we're yeah. ready to go now. Yours has got the little hole there for blade change. Yep. Yeah, when I actually bring this, up this. This hasn't got a hole. Right. So that means it's not sucking air in through there. Okay. It's sucking all its air in through there. So that helps so the efficiency of the dust So do you think it could be, yeah, engine. because I mean this, I always find when I'm using my um, TS55, I like to cut through into a board underneath just slightly. Because yes. what that tends to do is help all the dust come back through, through the extraction. Because yeah. if you're not, you do get a bit of dust fall underneath, which is fine. But if you are working indoors, if you, if you can't avoid it, you're in Chelsea, you're working in a flat, you just can't cut in the street. It's what you've got to do really. So, um, and, a, and a board here, a sacrificial board is always a good tip, yeah. I would say. I, I like that. And the other reason I like that is because one of the problems you get, I've seen this, you know, I lent my track saw as new as it was, I lent it to a guy, he'd never used a track saw before, he was blown away by it, he went, wow, I really want it. I said, look, he was taking the bottom off some oak doors, I said, you've got to use this, showed him how to use it, came back with a blooming great gouge oh, and that no. thing. And it's that thing of not supporting the work yeah. properly, isn't it? It you know? is. So having a board underneath yeah. helps prevent that, because that's the last thing you want is any sag, isn't it? It not does, that, it does. And, and, and if you're not dead level, and if you're out on site, you have got, you know, sometimes your stalls or your um, trestles aren't level, you're gonna get a saw bind, and it's not good for the machine if you're binding yeah. the blade together. And it could, quite what Roger's saying, come back across and give it a score. In fact, this one hasn't got one, but I have got a couple with the score, so. Yeah. Oh, well, I, no, I've got a few of those for us. <laughs> I, I put them to the back of the shed and deny any knowledge of yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. The other thing is, we've only got one front okay. adjustment there. So we're not front and back like right. this, right? We're not front and And you might worry about that because you'll think, hang on a minute, I really want something going on at the back here because if you don't, that's a loose edge. So mm -hmm. that's not a great idea, is it? But what is a great idea is if you, you can't see it there, again, we're going to have to do it with the camera, is going through the middle of here is a rod. Okay. Yeah? Now that rod tightens the back as it tightens the front. Okay, and yeah? that one mechanism, this so one, that one thumb mechanism, turn, will actually be enough to yeah. pull all that through. Pulls that rod up at the back. So so it's locked at the back as well as the front. All right. But you're Can I have a quick look underneath? Yeah, then? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's all unplugged, you're fine. I mean, I mean that is something. It's, it's quite slight though, that rod. It's, it's really thin. Yeah. But I mean, it's clever, I must admit. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think anything would happen to it myself. I could be wrong. Who knows? Well, you might be right. No, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's tensioning. I'll tell you what it is. All it is is a screw Ten thread. And tension it pulls wire. It. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It's a tension wire. Neat. So it's just pulling. So, no, I mean, you know, I reckon it's probably strong enough to do the job, yeah? Yep. So that is another little thing that they've thought about, which I quite like, yeah? You've got this um, with a click stop for yeah. using it on the track and off the track. Yeah. Yeah? Again, you've got to forgive me because it's my first day over with it. But that's your that's your indicator, right? So so just by spinning that round, yeah, that gives you. Well, that's a neat little function actually, because the um, track depth or not. What I tend to do with mine is I add six millimeters on, or that's take exactly six millimeters is, off yeah. or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't uh, know if, whether or not this will do this. Maybe the new TS55, yeah. the upgraded version, might do that. But, um, but you, you, you're you good with them, yeah, so just, you just go 6 yeah, mil. I just I'm know there, if I'm using away. a 18 mil, yeah. I go to 22, 23, or whatever, yeah. or 25 mil. So for those who don't know, that's because you've got a difference on the, when you're on the track, you're six millimetres higher. So if you want the same depth of cut, you've got to add six millimetres to this gauge here to get you down there, yeah? Another little thing. Let's um, just move that away because Dylan, our cameraman, might not be able to see. But what we've got here is, you know when you're, you've got a zero line yeah. and you're cutting? So and, 90 degrees. Yeah. Dead and square. as soon as you go over, yeah. Where's your, where's your blade? Where's your zero line gone? You know, where, yeah, you, if you're running to see to run, it, you mean? If you're not running on a track, if you're just running freehand, then look at this, Robin, have a look at that, look. See what's happening there? Yeah. It moves it. Oh, that's neat. Out. So when yeah. you're following the line, it's actually giving you the right position. Yeah. yeah I've not actually seen that before. It, it's moved it out on that. Crept What's out. that made of? Is that plastic, that end? Do you know what? It, it looks like it is. It's the sort of thing that, you know, that, that, yeah. that's going to get knocked that bit, I mean, with all due respect. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's good, though. I like that. There's um, 
so so that's that's the overcut right so the other thing you you'll know about this because you've got this right so if we want to go past the 45 yeah there's yeah. a push which would take us yeah. to 48 yeah? yeah and similarly the other way i believe no you can't i thought you could go i think it's this i think you have to pull that back that's it that. and yeah. you get you get a tiny bit more yeah. like that and of course when you go back up you're dead right when you go back up yeah it's, it's dead, there. it'll take it back yeah. to zero. Yeah. yeah, that other function, what you're talking about there, Roger, is a chippy, yeah. is when we're doing panels and we're joining panels together and that sort of stuff, let's say we're doing some cladding on a wall, what we want to do is overcut the panel slightly so the face is dead tight. Yeah. Otherwise, what we have to do is take a leading edge off it, like if you're hanging a door. Yeah. So, so I like very, that function. That very sharp yeah. mitre that you want at the front. Yeah. You can get because you're actually basically doing that gives you a bit of room for the glue, doesn't it? It as does, well? and also it makes sure the face is dead tight. And if you've got to shoot it in, you're only taking a little bit off. So yeah. I like that function. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could do it with this, but you kind of got to you've got to go the other way, and you've got to make sure your board you're going through the board in the right direction. Yeah, there's more to this machine. Yeah, and hopefully I'll uh, remember what the other yeah functions are as we go through. Yeah, but can I just talk to you now about the track because. They sell this in kits. And while we're on a subject to this, you know, we know that this is top dollar, Maffel. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about Festool being high end. There's loads and loads of choice in, in uh, track saws these days. Yeah. Loads of people out there, you can pick one up for 100 quid, you know, if you want to go for a Triton one or whatever. But as you go up, you've got to think, what am I getting for the money here? Am I getting anything extra? Yeah. And um, this set, I think, if we're talking UK, let me put that somewhere where it's not blocking the view. If we're talking UK, I think we're talking sort of for this set with the tracks, they do kits. And I think we're talking about 450 quid, that kind of money. Yeah, so know? out of the tool shop, it's about 450 pounds. And yeah. that's for the, the rails and the saw. That's not for a dust extraction unit as well. That's just for the rails and the saw. That's right, okay. absolutely, yeah. That's, that's all you're getting. Now, I've got a look for this. There's the clamps, you yeah. get the clamps in, right? Now what I am looking for, and I had it, so I've got to find it, is the joining strip. What does it look like? It looks like a big flat bit of metal. There you go, like the bit on the other side of there. <laughs> Let's turn it over the He's right the way. Boy. So the, um, so the right. joining strip's actually on the top, unlike it's the Festival one, which is inside here a little sort yeah. of long bit of uh yeah well metal. done mate i had it upside down anyway right well that's so, nice the fact that you can't lose it it's inside there well that's a good you don't thing. have to keep it inside there but obviously it makes because the saw will run over the top of it without any trouble at all yeah yeah you don't there's no need for you to take it out but when you are joining you've got a couple of little end pieces here right which are put in here really to stop the cable dragging right. over the edge at a sharp point, yeah. you know what it's like, right? So take those out. Again, we've got to keep those somewhere yeah. safe. You can see that I'm a great person well, I'd imagine losing. I'd imagine that I would not put them back in after a while because I haven't got anything like that on the end of no. mine. Well, but it's what? a nice touch. It wouldn't offend me too much if they, if they didn't go back in. Right, so we've lined those up, yeah? Now, this has got a little cam on it, right? Yeah? Now, this Allen key that they provide here has it got the Allen key for changing the blade, blade right. and a so it's a one screwdriver, tool. but you could use a coin, you could use anything, but we've got that one tool. Yeah. Now, the best thing to do is if you buy the joining strip, you get that Allen key, is to take the Allen key that's in here, yeah. right, if I can find it in a minute, it's poked in the end, yeah? Yeah, it is, I can see him. You got it? Well he's, done, mate. He's, he's dark he's, in colour. He's so good. Got right. a... So, Stick this one in in its place, yeah? Yeah, because you've actually got the end on it as well. And then you've got it, whereas yeah. that one, why wouldn't you just put an end on that one? Yeah. Does the end fit through as you slide yeah. it in? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it goes. Like it's not... I'll do it in a minute. It goes in there, yeah? Yeah, cool. Right, so it, it goes in. Same, right. same. Yeah. Same, same, only Perfect. different, as they yeah. say in Thailand, yeah? So, um, should we talk about Thailand? We were talking about the Caribbean earlier. Yeah. With the rain pattern I know. on the I tell you what, they'd love one of these in the Caribbean. My friend, uh, who's a plasterer, his dad was in Barbados and what he used to do is to ship a container load of furniture over and to cover the cost of his container, he'd get all kinds of, because he was a carpenter in Croydon for many, many years, retired back to Barbados. He used to put second-hand power tools in the container, in amongst all the furniture, he? and he'd get there to the port and they'd say, so what you got? He says, oh, I've just got my furniture. And he'd say, they have a quick look inside. He'd give him a couple of bottles of rum and off he goes. 
And anyway, so he empties his furniture and then he's got a line of guys coming up to the house because he's Brilliant. got, uh, a, you know, a drill from England, which yeah, is yeah. really good, you know. And so he used to cover the cost of the container. It was quite neat. So we run this up. Yeah. Yeah. That's all pretty standard stuff, isn't it? There's nothing you need to know about that. You, your first cut through is your sacrificial cut. This has never been cut yeah, before. Right. So we're so, going to see that in action. So good. the first one we do is the red cut, which gives us... Can you just talk about that, that, that edge though, Roger? How's yeah. it, is it stuck on like the Festal? Is it glued on? No, because you, you know what happens to them that, that over the time. In, in yeah, the you the just washer, catch them and they off, start peeling off. My Makita's done exactly the same. Then you've got to clean all the glue off. Yeah. You've got to get it, and then you've yeah. got to stick the thing back on. Now, what they've done on this one is they've actually just done it like a window gasket. Right. So you can actually peel that away. Okay. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to do it and then not be able to get it back in very easily, but you just lift it out. And it's a it, pressure fit. It, it fits exactly, into a groove or something. Exactly like right. a window gasket. So we've got a couple of rubbers here. Yeah. Not yeah. wide. They not look wide. really slim though, don't yeah. they? You not know? wide strip. Well, okay, let's have a go. Let's see if it's, it, is it got the friction. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got the friction. I mean, it's pretty yeah. good. So long, sucker. And the track <laughs> is quite narrow as well. Yeah, I mean, okay, does this work on this, does this work on this track? I very much doubt that, I mean, it's, um, it's, um, no chance. Uh, 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 why is that? Now, why is that? Let well, me... this, this track's got, if you look at the Festal um, one, it's got a much, much wider groove for the track. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 this and is tiny, isn't it? Yeah, My that's God. tiny. So that, that is a real lock-in, isn't it, there? This, Robin... They've got a camming device on this as well. Yeah. Have you got one either end on, on yeah, that festival? Yeah, there is, there is one on either end. Oh, there on is the on this as yeah. well. Okay, so you can tighten this up, get rid of any play, but look at that. Have a feel of that, mate. So I've, I've actually tightened that now, it's so too much, is it? loosen it just to give yourself a... Yeah, well, the idea of the cam I've always found um, was the fact that because it's nylon, effectively, yeah. the one on there, it's going to wear down, so you need to keep tightening it up to keep it nice and... Okay, um, yeah. 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 Yeah, that feels nice. Right, sl like slide over that joining strip just to. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a bit yeah. of play, a bit of clearance. Yeah. Like it. So, uh, obviously, with a bit of sawdust in it, you might have to clean it off. Mm. But, but th that basically, that kit gives you a long rail. Yeah, still not as long as you. Well, but, that's a special buy, that one. We're, anyway. we're, we're talking eight foot here, aren't we? Just actually, do you know what? Well, annoyingly, not yeah. quite. Is this a, a standard eight? That's a. Um, in fact, that's a two point four board. So an eight before would be slightly, slightly longer a standard board. Yeah. But all it, what it comes down to, Roger, is how well does it run off the end in in use? You know, can you run it right off the end? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, is yeah. there any play? It's not any play that way because I know for a fact. But it's annoying though. You know, if it was a few inches longer. Look at the play in that though, Roger. Look when you get. Oh, okay. See the play? Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's it. You know, I could tighten the cam up slightly, You've probably, but yeah, yeah. It's not a play. Okay, so that's the very last bit, isn't it? But anyway, that is um, their standard kit. But there's, I know they've got different rail kits. So if you wanted to do really long boards, you could get a longer one, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. This, my friend, I don't even think we've got time to go into this. That's for cross-cutting, isn't would it? You, yeah. Would you ever use that or not? I would definitely use it for doing, um, you know, like maybe if you'll cope with a bit of sawn timber, I want to put a beveled edge on, you know, a particular yeah. degree on it. There you are. I just need, I'd need to understand. I like that. Look at that, though. That's a nice little indicator mm. there. Yeah. Well engineered. I like the way that slides down there. 45 up to 60. I just need to understand how that actually secures itself. So I need to do a bit of reading up on that, Roger. Well, because it, it's the same rail. And you, so put, you can the, join you put it. that on. So you, you, you know, if you were trying to cut, you, you line up on this, yeah. put that on, and that would give you your cross cut or your angle, yeah? Yeah, so therefore, yeah. all you're doing is that is on the end of the board, that's setting the rail out. I, yeah. I like that actually, yeah. yeah. So you want to cut a bit of um, board at 45 degrees. And you can go bang all, that on there. all the way to the end. Clip in your um, your restrainer. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's you've, quite you've, nice. You've got, here, oh, look, the clamps are there. Yeah. Yeah. The old-fashioned clamps. It's funny how they use these clamps, isn't it? They never use the trigger ones. Have you seen? This is almost like. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is made in Germany. Most of it's made in Germany. But this looks to me. I don't know whether it's something to do with the colour of the handles or not. But it looks like it's straight up China, doesn't it? Why have I torn the bag when I've gone that way? Yeah. 
Well, it's not bad. The it's castings are lovely. Actually, it's not, is it? It's, it's a bit of chai. Normally, it's that red painted wood that gives, What's the, the, um, gives the game away. Yeah, I mean, the, these, these are very similar. They're almost... Um, almost ideal. Bit short, these are a bit shorter, which is obviously... A lot. I prefer that being a bit longer to get yeah, it in the board yeah, a bit. Yeah, but, um, yeah. yeah, very similar. Anyway, clamps, a lot of the time you never use them, but I think you're right. On that, you would use a clamp. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I think so. Okay, should yeah. we get some action going? Yeah, let's go for it. Um, All yeah. right, what, what, what blade have you got in there? Because if we're testing the two, you've got a 40... 42, isn't it? 42, isn't it? I right, think. we can flick it open yeah, if you want. Yeah, have a little look for me. You can flick it open, have a read. What does it say? You've got your 48. Glasses. All right, 48. so I'll put okay. a 48 in here, just so it's kind of comparable. It's been it's been sharpened. It's no, it's, it's a brand new, newly sharpened blade. We'll put that in. Okay. This comes in a stacking box like yours as well, by the way, same, same. A uh, sustainer? Yeah, sustainer, yeah. Right, one more thing before we actually get going. I'm sorry to do this, keep talking, but people are telling us they like longer videos. So here we are, the longest one. So <laughs> just this, Robin. Yeah. Um, little thing the guy showed me that was in the box. Again, this is an optional extra. Okay, so it doesn't come with, you buy no, that, do you? Yeah, yeah, you buy that as a little extra on your kit. Okay. Show me what it does. Go on, you tell me. You well, you know, I mean, it, it, look, it, good, it looks to me like you've got a series of marks. You've got 10, 12 and a half, 25, mm -hmm. 50. That looks like millimetres, because mm -hmm. that's 10 from there and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. It looks like it's parallel. It looks yeah, like it's going to clip on somewhere yeah, yeah. and it's going to assist us. Now, um, save me. Um, yeah, okay. There you go. There's all some right. holes there. You got it. You got it. Right, right, go for it. So all that's doing is yeah. it's giving you your plunge cut. Start oh, nice. and finish. Now on there, you do it with a window, it's the same as this one, yeah? yeah. But if you were plunge cutting, yeah. you were trying to get in to do a letterbox or whatever, yeah. yeah? By putting that on, we can That's set, gonna restrict you, is it? set our start and finish on it, and then it won't go past that line, apparently. I haven't got time to mess around with it, no. to try it. We might try it in a minute, see how we're doing time-wise. But anyway, that is an extra. I'm told it works, so yeah. we'll give that a go. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I've mentioned, because you know they, they will, they will be disappointed if I don't get through all these little points. The other thing is that if we use the Allen key yeah. on the top here, yeah. we've got a micro adjust. So we've got our depth stop. That's a little here. bit, a little bit anal. You are the most anal person I know, Robin. So what, um, when what, I say a millimetre matters to this guy, <laughs> he, co he considers that, he, he, he agonises over millimetres. Uh, I've seen some of your work. So, so the reason for the fine adjustment is you don't want to go too deep or you want to... Well, I'll tell you what, on there it's fine until you change the blade. You're right. Right. If you change the blade and you've got a blade that is... Okay. Supposing you've had it sharpened or something. Yeah. 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 So you've lost a tiny bit of size. Now, I know what you just said to me is that you make sure you've got a bit of sacrificial yeah. ball so you'll go very slightly more, won't you? Yeah. But in that um, respect, you can just adjust it. Yeah, you're okay. probably never going to So all do that it. will do is actually just, that will just set to suit the blade of the face. Yeah, absolutely. Once you're well, happy with what one millimetre is, that's... that's you you that zero will. it back, wouldn't yeah. you? You'd zero that set back, that and back. then you would set that absolutely so you weren't cutting. So that would just about kissing the, the work surface, yeah? Gotcha. And okay. then And then you'd be all right, yeah? So that's that, and also it's got a scribing setting on it. Right. Now, I don't know whether you've... On my Makita, there's a scribing setting, yeah. and I kind of find that very useful because what I find with the scribing setting, sorry, I'll get that in a sec, um, <laughs> as the actress <laughs> said to the bishop. Um, yeah, so what I find with the scribing setting is that sometimes the rubber is not enough to prevent the pickup or yeah. something. Yeah. But if you run it through on the scribe first, yeah. and it just takes that little bit of veneer yeah. off, so how Second deep is it when then. it's scribing? It's about a three millimetre, mil, three about mil, three, is it? About yeah. three mil, I think. So, yeah, okay, so it's, all, it's almost dead flat as it's going and, through, And what yeah. you must do, obviously, when you're scribing, is not move this at all, yeah. you know? Yeah, because so, you've got to follow through in the same place. Absolutely. All right, I good, I like it. Well, let's, yeah. let's have it's a go with this thing. thing. Isn't it? So let's have a go, yeah? Like, let's get dust extraction on. Bit of OSB. Yeah, I think it's a good material to try because it's kind of like, Yes. The most used material now, it's, I would say. It's cheap. We don't and, uh, want, and we, we don't can want to sacrifice be, it. We don't want to be yeah. chopping up and also expensive it's, um, stuff. You know, this stuff will go through your blades as well, so it's quite a good material to try. Yeah. Okay then, Roger. Do you ever sharpen blades, Robin, or not? I do. I have all my blades. I don't do it personally. No. But I do have them all sharpened. If you look in my... Oh, yeah, there you go. Look. 
This is the pile of blades for just that machine. So I've always got half a dozen that are sharpened, and as soon as I get down to um, one or two, yeah, nice. Yeah, Do all they, different blades, with different so things. So, how much are they costing you to get sharpened? Sharpened, a decent sharpening of them, depending on the number of teeth, of course. But they cost about twenty pounds to get a blade sharpened. If you take a few more in, it's a little bit cheaper. So, what is it, thirty-five quid to buy a new blade? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're buying a, um, a decent blade, a decent Festool original blade, they might be a little bit more than that. Yeah. Um, but just be aware of cheap imitations because you know it's just one of those things you don't want to waste money you want to get a genuine original product so I always say that because it depends your work it's your livelihood you know you want quality I'll tell you one of the problems you do get actually is if you cut that sacrificial rubber and then you change blades to a different brand yeah there's a different thickness on it yeah suddenly that isn't doing the job yeah. that it used to do it doesn't it? but I think what you find though with any tool you get used to your own tool Excuse, yeah. the, uh, excuse the pun. Yeah, yeah, so um, right. You get used to your own tool, and so you do find, if you've got a pencil mark there, you know that if your blade is slightly off, you're actually on the line. So, um, yeah. okay, I'll put my, my rail on as well, this way around. Right, which way? You're going that way, I'm yeah, going Yeah, I'm going to come up here, you're going to go down there. I'm going to wave to each other on the way, are we? Yeah. Have you ever had a jump out situation with these? Um, I think, these tools I think that if I have done, it's because I was either rushing or I wasn't paying attention because that's like everything else in life, that's where, it, where things tend to go wrong. Now, the only trouble is, mate, I need to get over to that dust extractor. And? Right. You, want me to, you want me to shift it around, do you? Well, got how about we I've, pass it underneath? I've got four metres of lead. How have much you? Is, how four metres? I don't know. Let's yeah, see. Well, keep yeah. walking. Right. How far have you got? Oh, there's not a lot in it, mate. That's it. They're both four metre leads, They're four aren't they? metre leads. Okay. The only thing you've got, you've got the plug it, which is yeah. great. I like the plug it. Yeah, well, I think with the rail saw, you need four metres. If you're cutting 2.4 metre yeah. rips, you need to sort of go up and down. The guy, the, the, the fellow, Jody from Maffel, he was saying to me that some people take this off and put the plug it on. Do they? Yeah. They adapt it. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Interesting, that. Oh, dear. Right, I mean, so, so what we're we setting up for, Sweetie? We're setting right. up, we're on the rail. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take a rip out of this piece of OSB, 18 millimetre 18 OSB. 18 mil, right. So I'll set my 18 mil. If I can find the little release thing. There it yeah. is. I'm 18 mil. And, the, and your little turning. Do you go for 18 or do you go for 19? Oh, I'll, take it, I'll take it just through into the one underneath, into my sacrificial board. So that's 19. Yeah. Or well, in my case, I'm adding on around about 6 mil. Yeah. For the rail. But what I'm saying is if I go to 19 mil there, let me tell, I can tell from Let's see. coming off the rail. Can't, oh no, I can't. I'll tell you why, because I've got to cut through the rubber. Ah. First job, cut through the rubber. Fine. Once only. Now, to do that, mate, I've got to go off there and I'm going to have to move that. You're going to cut so far, you're going to slide it along. Shall I do the cut at the same time as I do the, cut the rubber, is that? I, would have, yeah. I wouldn't have thought that would hurt. No, let's do it then. Okay. But then I'm going to have to get to the end and do it, otherwise I'll be ragged, all right? Yeah. I hate being ragged. All right, so right. What, what you want to do is just see how easy they look, how easy they perform. Cable, so cable management. What do you do, just drag it off? Yeah, to be honest with you, I mean, I always, you can do a dry run, you can make sure all your cables are following you. That's always a good tip. Yeah. Just do a dry run, make sure it you can not. actually get up and down. That's where I like to go, over the top. I can hang myself. Well, I think There's the beauty, not enough of that around no. these days, is but there? But the, the beauty of a rail saw is you can sort of, you know, you can go so far, yeah, you can stop. rest, you can run it up again. It's nice to pass all three in one go because you know, always got to do that, run it up again. Yeah, run you it up again. Start yeah. in the cut. Yeah, that's you a, best, that's a that, really important you? point that you should run the saw right up, gently plunge it down, and away you go. Um, what I haven't seen, oh yeah, I've got speed control. Have you? So we're going up to top speed yeah, on Yeah, I would always use OSB on. Whoa. You know you what, mate? Pull, pull the sides, mate. I love the smell of a new motor. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in the morning. It smells like victory. Uh, happy it? days. Well, we'll see anyway. Let's have a go then, all right? Right, okay mate, off we, we go. I don't... Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Ah! 
Ow! Do you know what I'm on? You're I'm on, on Scribe. I'm on Scribe. Ah. Right, I'm off Scribe you ready? now. ready? Okay, yeah. let's go again. Just gonna move over so I can finish cutting my rubber rubber robin. Okay. That's hard to say. Cut my rubber robin. Yeah? Yeah. You don't need to know this, do you? Right, so I want to get back in the groove. That's it. It's a good way of doing it, plunging it in while it's off. Except it's not quite there, is it? <clears throat> Am I in? I think what I would what I would suggest is just gently gently let the groove go That's in. Now it. gently push right. along with it off, and that will line you up back in the groove. Oh, okay. Keep yeah. it in. So yeah. Just mean? yeah. Just push it in and Keep just gently in. just gently roll it up the work, and that will just make everything nice and true again. Oh, mate. That's why I like yeah. working with you. All right. You've got ideas. You've got tips. It's due to your years of experience in the field. It is. It's, this is a good demonstration of just how good their friction rubbers are on the bottom because that is really held. So we just nudge it over, try that, Roger? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready right. to go. Good. Yep. go I'm ready it. to go. I'm only going to do this last bit anyway, yeah. just, just so I can finish cutting that sacrificial. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what, mate. It certainly because goes through there fast. I'll tell you what, the dust extraction's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, that, you know, you're talking about that house in Chelsea, working indoors. Yeah, exactly. You, you wouldn't... Let's have a little look at the quality of that cut. Let's see how their blade fares up. Do you know what? I've just left that. Yeah, you're on the money there. Well, you tell me what that's set at, Robin. So... That's at 20 millimetres. Right, so this is 18 mil ball. This is 18 millimetre ball. And I've set this on the rail setting. Yeah. So that's compensated. Okay, so that is compensated. So Isn't it? Let's turn it around. No. See, now you've gone up. Now if you cut now, it will cut actually underneath. But that's what I've, I've cocked yeah. up, didn't I? So let's take that I back. I cocked up, I had the, the wrong way round. Yeah, so that's an interesting point. Just a matter of um, getting used to it. It's just all yeah, new yeah. tools, like so, a new car. So, so basically, funny thing is, mate, it's going to take you a long way through, though. No, that, isn't I'm, it? I'm almost there. Yeah. As Andy Williams would say. <laughs> Did he say that? Who was it? Who said that? We're almost there. You've made a really nice little feature there. You've oh, made mate. a hinged panel. Do you know what? I love things like that. Yeah, that is a whisker, isn't it? That is an absolute whis whisker. Look. That's it. What can we say? Right. Does the job. It does do the job. Um, I'll tell you what will be interesting. Um, quite a lot of times, if I'm doing a big roof deck or something like that and I've got my saw set up and I'm taking a, an equal amount off several boards, if I've got a repeat, if you know what I mean, I will stack two or three boards together and if I'm using my large circular saw, I'd cut through three of these boards at once with a decent blade. If I'm using Not on the that, best, though. well, I would go for two, but sometimes I find it gets really hot and it just starts to give up a little bit and I have to sort of stop. It's a little bit too much. And as this has got a slightly powerful, uh, more powerful yeah. motor. That's 1200, this is 14. Yeah. And they say, they're telling me that it's got this strange motor in which has got more torque in it anyway. I'd like so. you to give that a go for me. I'd like to spin this board round and I'd like you to cut right through both pieces of this. Well, why don't we just put that on top so we're not wasting your board? If it's wide enough for your rail. So, yeah, that's, a good, try that's a good point. Let's try because I don't want to waste your... So, what, pop you, that Are on you going to do this? Or are we gonna... I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind giving it a go because I know how it feels. That's enough. That's we're, cut, that's we're cutting it there. Right, you? you do it. Yeah, yeah. You, you run it because you so, haven't even put your hands on this baby yet. And, all right. And if you're going to end up buying one, okay. who knows? I'm going to take this down, the blade, to 36. I'll, pick, I'll go a bit more, I'll go 37 because I want to go right through. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll go 38. And is that set on the rail setting now? That's on the rail setting, yeah. Right. So, so now goes... we're going to cut, that means we're cutting through two thicknesses of board 
and we're going to go into the one underneath. So it's two and a bit. So I'll be interested to see how it goes. So you've got a 40 mil? Yep. And so what are you going through? No, no, hang on, because you've got nothing sacrificial under no, here. No, no, I'm going into this board, sacrificial. Oh, we're still in that. Of course yeah. we are. We've got double there. So yeah. triple. Yeah, we're all right. Sorry, mate. Okay. It's been a long day. It has. Right, let's put that it's on there. It's been a long so life. Fall off. Right. Okay. Just not familiar, my, familiarise myself with it. It all looks yeah. good. Do you yeah. want me to be your cable basher? I can hold this for you. No, I'm, I'm pretty happy. It's a service, service I provide. Right, I'm going to rock. One thing. Straight away then, I went, I went for that. Ah, and it was there's not handles. there, look. That, it's not there. So why, that's interesting. Why so would I, they not put a handle on that? I don't know. I mean I can hold it, I suppose, but I don't wanna oh, let's have a little look. I mean Would you put a hand on the rail or what? On the um, um I don't know. I mean yeah, I think it's it's quite, kind of I could put the thumb there. I mean it's a bit close to the well you this can't is go the, in this the is blade. This is the problem, isn't it? You're always trying to stay away from the Let blade. me try that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This, Robin. Yeah. Because it's sliding. Yeah. What I'm going to do is, I was surprised that I actually tackled that, so I'm going to finish the cut off with the oh, festool okay. and see nice. how that goes. Now that will that rail work with the festool? No, I'm going to it? swap that over. I'm going to put the festool rail on now. So if I just place that carefully out of the way, not on the rubber edge. That's the worst thing to do. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, because you, you damage it. Yeah. So we'll spin this round. I've never done that, mate. I've never, I've never looked after my rubber edge. And we will. We will go in there. I should start looking after it. A you bit better more. had. And we'll go in there and we'll Mind see if, you, having if said this that, will mate. take. The having same. said that, well, there's no rubber left on there. No, nah, this is a, this is well used. This one. I need to change this. One. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, give me my dust extraction. Dust extractor. I'm getting so excited. I do love tools. You do. Right. Here we go. Let's see how this fares. Pretty good. Pretty good. You can clearly see the blade is twice the thickness there. Can you have a look at that? You can see here, a bit crude, but you can see the blade thickness of the Festool as we went in, and this is where we came out with the Mafel. So the Mafel blade is slightly thinner, which is obviously going to remove less stock. I wouldn't say that was under impressive. I mean, that, that, that is the criticism I do hear about the Festool is slightly underpowered. Yeah. It's, it's got less power than my Makita. Yeah. But do you know what? A lot of the time, I mean, this is interesting that you do two cuts, two, two, two or three sheets at a time. I've never done that. Obviously, I'm a slower guy, but I think they overwork this depth of cut because it's all sheet material and you're never getting... It's like some people go, oh, I want 55 millimetres yeah. depth of cut. I'd never push one of those saws through 55 millimetres of timber. No, and I'd imagine the manufacturers yeah. wouldn't advise it as well because, I mean, OSB is very unforgiving. It's a little bit, you know, I mean, look at the yeah. density of it, for example. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but on the whole, nice saw. You're still happy with your Festool, keep your Festool? Um, I think I'd consider one because of the, there's a couple of features that the Festool doesn't have. Um, just like the when it skews over to do the scribe on the uh, minus one, one degree, I quite like that. Yeah. Um, and it's robust. Good bit of kit. Yeah, it's all right. All, all right. right. Happy with Festool. Well, that's, we're going we're gonna to play with this a bit more before they, ask us for it back. You never know. You never know with these people. They could phone up tomorrow and say, can we have our saw back? <laughs> and, uh, but that it, we may have it for a month. You never know. Yeah. We do a lot of cutting in a month, can't we? Absolutely. We so, go through plenty of MDF. We'll leave it in the workshop and uh, we'll play. Yeah. Perfect. And we've got something else to play with as well, which is their new Maffel jigsaw. Oh, nice. We chuck that in as well. 
So we'll give that a go. That's going to be in our next video coming up on Skill Builder. Don't forget to subscribe to us, please. We love subscribers. We want you to come back and see stuff and tell your friends and give us a like or whatever you do. I'm Roger Bisby. I'm Robin Clevett. And we're going to see you again soon. Thanks for joining us. No, I know, but right. it's just a question of whether he feels comfortable on that side or on that side. You know, like some people always have to sleep on the left-hand side of the bed, some people on well, the right. We'll, we'll see. I just we'll, wanted to know how we'll he felt. That was what all. about if I spoon Look, you? all I'm doing, I'm just being what about, caring. What about if I spoon you no, first? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, all we need the, to give him I'm just some... being a caring...